What up, my ninjas? It is Strident. I am back with a movie review this time. It seems like I'm on a row. What is that, like four reviews in two days, something like that? Um, let's just say I guess these are my days off, and I'm kind of, I've got a lot of things going on, but uh, I'm reviewing Captain America the First Avenger. Um, I saw the movie about, what is it, two days ago with my son, and we, uh, we, we just, we chilled, and we, uh, enjoyed it thoroughly my son's mouth was just <laughs> dropped his jaw was dropped though, almost the entire movie he's a big Avengers fan um, I like Captain America I like ultimate Captain America and what I liked about this movie is that there are aspects of Cap's story that kind of got they're kind of stale I guess and uh, the uh, direction that uh, Joe Johnston Johnston and his team took kind of it adds character and personality to those bland elements that the old story had. Now, uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, is the tale of Steve Rogers. He's a scrawny kid from Brooklyn, represent, who um, pretty much just wants to serve his country during uh, uh, World War II. Um, he feels, you know, a, a very, uh, a, a, a huge amount of pride and uh, he's very patriotic about, you know, his serving his country, pretty much. He uh, repeatedly, repeatedly, I told you he's scrawny, he repeatedly, repeatedly tries out for um, the, you know, armed forces and keeps getting turned down because of all kinds of ailments and because of his, you know, frail physique and everything. And uh, anyway, he fails so many times, and then during a fair, he pretty much gets a second chance when he's approached by uh, Dr. Erskine, uh, played by Stanley Tucci. Sorry if I messed that up. I'm not German. I'm pretty bad with German. So, anyway, um, Stanley Tucci's character, the doctor, pretty much uh, sees qualities in Steve Rogers that would make a better candidate for the program that he's working on, which is the fabled super soldier program. Uh, it's funny because in Marvel, just about every freaking thing is either part of the super soldier program or the Weapon X. Things like that are what made me kind of get out of it. But in this movie, that works. So that is the beginning of the awesomeness. Um, pretty much after that, the doctor gives him a free pass right into the military as a guinea pig for his project. So provided he survives, he gets to be used in the military. Uh, it's pretty cool how they did all these f fortuitous happenings, you know? And the way also that you get to see kind of the uh, the precursor to S.H.I.E.L.D. And you get to see some familiar faces, you know? For, for some people who are fans of uh, the, the old school comics with uh, the old Avengers and S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything, you see characters like Dum Dum Duggan. Uh, or at least it's Dum Dum Duggan's grandfather or father, perhaps. Um, but you see references. You see a young uh, uh, Nick Fury, actually, which is kind of strange because, like, usually the problem that a lot of comic book movies have been having is that each movie tries to be in its own universe, whereas now that Marvel has the licensing for all of their stuff, it's one big universe with several different writers and directors just like the comics. I remember back when uh, X-Men came out and Spider-Man came out and the Hulk. I was like, you know, it'd be awesome if when you're watching X-Men, you see Spider-Man swing by, you know? It's kind of like they took a page out of uh, JLU's uh, Justice League Unlimited's book for the cartoon and used it for their live action films. If only DC would jump on board with that and stop making all these recreations and reimaginings of all these characters and just give us the ideal version of their uh, origins and get the stuff out there, you know? So, you know, at least we are getting a, a Justice League, you know, movie eventually. But anyway, the I'm going to be really... Uh, I'm, I'm going to try not to spoil anything for those of you who are planning to go. I, I told you how it begins pretty much the action in this movie is pretty good they kind of show you that uh, Cap is faster than the average person obviously uh, they show you he's a lot stronger because he just tosses people like in the A-team um, 
the they came up with a nice explanation for his shield. It's no longer a adamantium vibranium alloy. It's just pure vibranium. So they explain how the vibranium absorbs all vibration. So there's no kickback from the things that hit him. So he could sit there and block a tank shell and nothing will happen because he's strong enough to take the impact but the shield itself absorbs impact which is freaking awesome also they explain that vibranium is so light so uh him tossing that shield around and it's hitting people with like crazy accuracy just it makes sense and it's a very small piece of information that's you know put in there but it works and this is one of those movies where the the logic that the uh, filmmakers inject into this movie helps fully realize ideas and uh, uh, concepts that we've seen in the comics for years, but you only get the information from like other sources like trading cards or source books, etc. Because, you know, Cap's been around for like, what, 60, almost 70 years? He's been around for a long time and everybody wants to put their spin on it. I like this version. I, I kind of am conflicted about how they handled Bucky. The character was awesome, but his exit, and this, that's as much of a spoiler as I'm going to give you, his exit is kind of akin to soap operas, <laughs> where, you know, when a, a character falls off a cliff, because you don't see to death, it means they could always come back. And it's kind of like what they did with Cyclops in the X-Men movies, you know? You needed to get him out of the story because he was useless, but you had to do it in a way that would allow for him to come back. So, you know, you guys will see that and you can tell me what you think. Um, the romance in the movie, as you've seen the hot, hot, hot Haley Atwell, and usually I don't get like this about the chicks in movies because it's their job to be hot. A lot of them don't even have to act like Megan Fox. She just has to be kind of hot. And I mean, I love brunettes. She's just too skinny, but she is hot. But uh, Haley Atwell, that's a woman right there. Many of the uh, summer superhero movies that we've had, like Green Lantern, for instance, they force this romantic situation on these characters. And it sucked in Green Lantern that they, you come into a, a relationship that kind of is already underway, whereas in Cap, you got to see it develop. And here's a guy who kind of gave up because he's so scrawny, he's been overlooked by just about every girl he's come across. Then he meets this pretty tough uh, military woman who sees qualities in him that probably the doctor saw in him and sees that he's kind of a, a man's man. He's not one of those man whore types, kind of like Bucky. <laughs> Bucky was more of a, a ladies man type trying to, you know, jump on anything with breasts. Um, whereas uh, Steve was a little bit more of a realistic human being <laughs> in the sense that he wanted, like he says in the movie, the right dance partner. He was looking for the right type of girl for him to go gaga over, which is understandable. I, I kind of I relate to that. Um, this is more of that everyman charm, and it's also part of the more realistic romance. Not every guy can meet a chick that's hot and then just jump on her and have sex immediately it doesn't work like that you know um freaking ryan reynolds character was a complete asshole and then here's this chick kind of pining over him and then he's kind of screwing it up and she's still pining over him and you're supposed to believe that this is a natural relationship and yes we see this in real life but i don't want to see it on the screen i don't want to watch a dysfunctional relationship you save that for other people i want to watch someone actually work to get their relationship going and have it be good and you get that here also you wait and you wait and you wait and there's so many missed opportunities for steve and uh uh peggy what was her last name i can't remember i need to check that out for a second peggy carter for steve and peggy carter to have these intimate moments and uh they keep missing them and they keep missing them and you're kind of like dude take advantage of the time you have already because, you know, it's getting closer to the point where you know he's going to die or... <laughs> I keep saying die. Get frozen, pretty much. Um, and you're like, hurry up and, you know, kiss the damn girl, you know? And normally, I don't care about that stuff. Even my son, he was like, normally, he's like, ew, they're kissing. But at this point, 
you just want them to have a moment, you know? And I think that was cool. It's a different choice from the other movies. But um, the romance was actually cool. It didn't feel forced and it didn't bother me at all. I, I was impressed for a change. I'm like, whoa, look at Marvel pulling out all the stops. Um, uh, Hugo Weaving plays the Red Skull. And it's weird because like I hadn't really seen a picture of the Red Skull up until about two weeks before the movie came out. My son and I were at Target and we saw the Red Skull three and three fourths figure. Then I came home and then I saw a picture on YouTube or something of uh, I think Jeremy Johns or somebody freeze framed the trailer. I was trying not to get into all that stuff, but you know, someone freeze fra framed that image from the trailer and you got to see him. Hugo Weaving. I don't even have to spend time on Hugo Weaving because if you put him as the villain, which seems to be his shtick, it's, he's going to be serviceable. He's a really good actor. He was amazing as V. I'm not going to mention him as Megatron and Transformers because I think that role was beneath him. They shouldn't have gave it to him. They should have actually... I can kind of see why Frank Welker didn't even bother because it was so stupid, but he was awesome as Agent Smith. I mean, he's just a good actor, plain and simple. He's a great actor plain and simple um there were issues with the way that they used or underused the red skull it felt like you know more villains you get to see them do lots of things for you to hate them whereas the red skull seemed like uh, a character that you should hate because he's a nazi and then uh he does like one or two things that are kind of evil mostly to his own people and uh it's like you don't care so it's just like you're waiting for Cap to womp on him, and you don't really ever get that. So in my opinion, I wish they had done a little bit more with him, but I was okay with what the end result was, because it still felt like something that could be the outcome during, you know, a big war. Um, all in all, everything in this movie works. And then to top it off is like the icing on the cake. After the credits, you get... Actually, you get two things, because the very end of the movie, you get um, Cap waking up in a different, uh, <laughs> in, in, in the, the modern time. Most people, you guys know the Cap story, so um, you know he's a modern superhero, so you know at some point he had to wake up in modern times, and I didn't even think they were going to end it that way, because I heard it was a period piece. It, it begins in the present, and it ends in the present, and then on top of that, they give you the trailer for the Avengers. Well, like a teaser. Yeah, everything happens so fast that it takes you a little, a couple minutes to remember everything, you know, and to re let everything, you know, marinate in your mind. I'm happy. I was like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. Because, you know, there was a point in time where, like I said, I used to read Marvel Comics. These movies kind of feel nostalgic in that way because they're focusing on the old characters and not some of these contrived corny new characters that just don't feel like Marvel characters you know um, it's cool to see a smaller team of Avengers uh, it's kind of cool and kind of annoying to see aspects of the Ultimates seeping through into the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, any of you who know about the Ultimates you know that the Ultimates was created as pretty much a Bible to tell movie makers how to make an Avengers movie or you know what they should make so it's kind of nice that it worked I just kind of wish that they went all the way because there are scenes in Ultimates that shoot there's whole parts entire issues and mini arcs in that whole Ultimates 1 and 2 that kick the shit out of anything they've ever done with Marvel superheroes on screen so I don't know I'm, I'm kind of conflicted, but I'm happy because that means you get some awesome action, and I'm an action junkie, so it's good to see these things. Um, Thor, he looks, Chris Hemsworth, he looks even bigger in that trailer than he was in Thor, which is crazy. What are they feeding him roids for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Oh, and here's a little roid, mid, a roid sandwich for your midnight snack, Mr. Hemsworth. It's like, shit, this dude is huge. But it's awesome, because Thor is huge. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but yeah. All in all, you know, I gave you a pretty broad explanation for the movie. All in all, the story is fairly tight. The problem was uh, the montages for action. Instead of montages, we needed to see uh, development. Actual missions from beginning to end, or from, you know, a point 
to the end so that we can go along with the characters and go through what they went through and see them you know form the camaraderie that uh or camaraderie that uh we're supposed to believe that they have um characters i mean there is a lot of character development and the characters were awesome you see so many characters that have parts or are related to people who have big parts in the marvel universe it's awesome to see that i mean you get to see howard stark and you know in the movie in iron man when you see howard stark and he's kind of old and he's skinny and he's you know all stiff you're kind of like i don't see how they think that guy reminds you know nick fury says that tony reminds him of his dad i was like i didn't see it and they show young howard stark it's like shit i see it that guy could have actually played iron man it's weird you know um there's little hints of comedy so the tone is awesome i brought my son to it he's nine he enjoyed it he wasn't scared i think the only thing he was scared of is when they show a little bit of red skull's origin and it's only because of the way it's shot it's not really a scary scene or anything um the romance was awesome because once again you had good characters the uh the, the the timing and pacing of everything was wonderfully done you didn't feel like it didn't feel to me like anything was rushed well maybe the the montage part signals that things were rushed in a certain area but story-wise things felt like they took the adequate amount of time to develop so that you could actually get into it more so than in any of the x-men movies um i liked the costume was awesome i like how they even how captain america gets his name that was awesome too there's a little joke in there it's freaking awesome there was actually some cool artwork in there it looked like it was either adam hughes or uh What's the other realistic dude? Francesco or uh, Terry Dodson, but Terry Dodson mostly does women. I don't know, but if you look in the background, you guys with, with awesome eyes, you can tell. Maybe when this comes out on DVD, I'll pause it and I'll find out who did that piece. But anyway, all in all, this is an awesome movie. It's worth your money. It's awesome to see good movies come out in the summertime for a change. So uh, go and see it if you get the chance. I don't recommend seeing it in 3D because some of the special effects kind of, you can tell that it's a special effect. Green screen is used a lot and there are a lot of, screen, of scenes where it's not blatantly obvious, but then there's a bunch of scenes where it is blatantly obvious. And I think in 3D, it would only reveal those kind of inconsistencies more. I mean, no film is perfect. Actually, that's a lie. No film is completely perfect, at least these days. But it's in such a good film, you just want to see the movie technically the way it was intended to be seen. 3D is more of a gimmick than something to actually help the filmmakers give you the experience they were trying to give you. So to me, don't waste your money on 3D. I'm with Angry Joe on this one. 3D is a waste. Don't bother. Just see it in regular old 2D with film grain and all the classic stuff the way film was meant to be seen. Um, I don't know if, uh, I don't know, I hope I covered everything. I don't know if the Avengers will be a little different. I mean, no one knows yet. Time will tell. But, uh, yeah, I would, uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, save up some money so you can go check out the uh, Avengers when it comes out. It'll be worth it. It's awesome that Marvel finally finished all their, the main Avengers and, uh, you know, now we're going to see what it's like to have a superhero team comprised of characters that we've seen their origins in separate movies. It's a first for that because the superhero genre is pretty young and this is the first. Maybe this will be the blueprint or at least be kind of like a, uh, it will obviously be the starting point for other team films and it will uh, explain to or or, or uh, map out for other companies and other writers and directors how to do this kind of ensemble film featuring headliners from other films you know not just headlining actors but headlining characters from other films in this it's almost like a league of extraordinary gentlemen except probably it'll be done completely right because there won't be car chases on the streets of venice the city on water so that's it for me you guys have been great i hope you dug my review i hope i did it justice and uh i will see you soon tonight we are going to see uh tekken blood vengeance because we actually found a screening in our city 
and uh, I will definitely be back to let you know how that was. All right, people, peace outside.